Hello and welcome back to OC Avery and welcome to episode two of the Natives in Norwich Zoom Room with Jack Lloyd. So obviously we've done it in two parts. You saw the first part last week, now this is the second part. So today we're going to focus on limits and other experiences Jack has had or just a drop in the ocean worth of experiences that Jack has had. Um, we'll have to try and cover it in more Zoom Room episodes and meetings with Jack. So we'll get all that done. But today we're focusing mainly on limits and other things that Jack has done. So plenty to pick up from today's video. So I hope you do enjoy it. Uh, just before we go into it, uh, just a few thank yous to start with. So thank you to Mac Finch for managing to get this um, sort of sorted out. Uh, thank you to Jack himself and his niece Stacy uh, for taking time to to uh, work all this out and, and make it all work. So thank you guys. Thank you to Avian World Dublin for sponsoring the Natives of Norwich group. And then finally, um, I'd just, just like to say thank you to you all who've watched it. We've had a great response so far from the first uh, part. So I hope you uh, hope you like this second part uh, as well. And if you haven't already joined the Natives Norwich group on Facebook, the link will be in the description. So I hope you enjoy. So how did you first start your line of linnets? Where did, where did that start from? Well, they never, I didn't start to uh, breed in. Uh, for years and years after, because I never ever thought a linnet would go down in a cage, you see, or a yeah. flight or anything, until uh, until I tried them, which uh, is probably still the best way uh, in an aviary. Uh, yeah, you'd have more. You'd have more. I'd advise us. You'd have more success. Yeah. But for, I know. Uh, same as my linnets now, is a, I'm very, very quiet. I've even got my young linnet now, uh, one of my young linnets, when I go to it and talk to it uh, with my finger, and it's fetching food up, wanting to feed my finger. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, there you go. That's in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So birds, birds what have never seen anything else. Uh, there's not a lot of problem of them breeding anywhere because that's all they know. Yeah. But uh, things can go wrong. The smaller you keep them down to breed, smaller avery or cage or whatever, uh, more problems can happen. Whereas if they're in a larger flight, more natural, we'll say, uh, well, they'll, they'll, uh, you'll have more success at rearing them. But the problem is, the problem is then steadying them down. You see, yeah. but you, you're better having one, you're better having one out of a, just rearing one in a cage than having five out of a flight. <laughs> yeah. They can show it. You can't put them in a in a show cage. Yeah. Because they, 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 they fly it. It's, it's natural for a linnet to be flighted. Yeah. And that's what keep, that's what keeps them alive. That's what's kept me alive, being active. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, where did you start your line of linnets from? Was there a particular source that you uh, brought them in from? Well, they could always buy linnets. Yeah. I mean, in, in them times, uh, your linnets and your goldfinches, red poles, siskins, uh, were for sale every week in cage and every bird. Yeah. I've had, them sent, I've had all birds sent from all, for, for, for interest, one little thing I always think about. Uh, a fellow advertised uh, wax wings from yeah. four far in Scotland. And uh, I sent off for one, and uh, the box came with five in. You were packing in, so yeah. I had five wax wings. I was only in my teens then, and uh, well, we didn't know very little about wax wings or what you fed them on or anything. You see, because uh, what can I say? Uh, in them times, probably people were, were lucky to feed themselves. Yeah. And, uh, 
I know I finished up, I managed to get a load of raisins. Uh, and uh, that's what I give them. With different with dog biscuits soaked or whatever things, dog food. And uh, they started with the, with the rice going sore, which ah. was they said uh, the amount of sugar in 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 the uh, in the raisins, you see. So I was in the house one night, and my mother says to me, "What's do? What you? What's do with you?" I said, "Nothing." Yeah, there is. There's so much do. I said, "I've got a bird with sore eyes." And my mother, three other people, they were all sat round the table after tea, down in stockings, your pet stockings. You know, always wearing the toes and the heels out. <laughs> and uh, and my auntie Ethel says, cold milk's best thing for our sore eyes. Hey, true. I bathed all their eyes with my cold milk, and they come all right. No. Wow, <laughs> that's fantastic. That, so that... you could. You could get birds like that uh, then at any time so so easily. How old were you when you got yeah. your first? And the first yeah. the first uh, first meal of Red Bull that, uh, that we had, I'm I'm almost sure it come from of a fella called Illingworth. Oh right. Somewhere up up Newcastle way. Yeah. Right. And, and bred bred them then, you know. But we give them plenty of live food because that's what we they thought they wanted. You see. Yeah. Every, you know, every bread like, you know, plenty of room for them. Yeah. But, uh, no, I think because me, me and Terry and Andrew were, were pioneers of breeding British birds in this country. Definitely. Uh, mm. when, when you breed your linnets, what do you look for in a bird to breed from? Well, I like st steadiness, first of all. Yeah. Because steadiness will breed steadiness. You know what the old saying is, you can't breed a tame and awful wild one. <laughs> 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 Which is true in a roundabout way, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, that's why my green finches are so steady. There's times when I think they're too steady. It's just getting that bird what is just a bit active that will move about but still uh, perform. Yeah. So Which so steadiness is eh? so steadiness is one of your main priorities uh, for a breeding bird. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've they've, they've actually ac they've accepted you, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you breed your linnets, then I, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that flighty birds won't breed because. Everything's meant to breed, and uh, it's a funny thing that when they can be flighty, but once it comes breeding time, there's something comes over them. Yeah, they seem to settle more. Got you. Uh, when you breed your mm. linnets, do you pair uh, yellow to yellow for colour, uh, and does that bring the size down? Slightly, yes, but you're looking for that. You see, with the feed what we have today, uh, you can always put that bit of weight on. Yeah. Which gives them that, well, what is it, X factor, gives them that bit of uh, oh. an advantage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because when they put a bit of weight on, they tend to put the feathers round, round the sides and show yeah. the self more. Got you. Um. So, obviously, you mentioned earlier that you breed your linnets in the kitchen. Uh, does it ever bother you that... Ah, some, some of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of them. Yeah. Uh, does it ever bother you that maybe the, the hen might come off the nest and then would you have to rear these birds? Comes off the nest and... Uh, then you have to re rear the chicks. Said that, was he you, yeah, So, does it bother you that... Um, if a hen came off a nest and then you would have to hand rear them oh and that do doesn't also. bother me I love it it's his favourite <laughs> thing to do oh fantastic uh, do, does, do you ever uh, you, 
h- how is your success breeding the some of the linnets in the kitchen? My success? Yeah. It, does it work well? It's well, only two, it's only two years since I, uh, since I tried it, you see? Since you've been on it. Yeah. And uh, as I say, I'm hoping last year I was, uh, well, I think they got a box ready for me, tell you the truth. But, oh, really? uh, I was terrible. I didn't want to do anything. I had no use in me. All I wanted to do was sleep. And I just lost a, a lot of interest. And uh, my birds got overrun with night. I've never known anything like it. And that put them all off. Mm. Yeah. So now I'm using, I've tried everything. But. Uh, and to the cages now with that, I can't say the word, Demetrius Earth or something. Or oh, other. yes, yeah. Diatomaceous yeah. Earth, yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put it all round the bottoms when I cleaned them out, the trays at the bottom in the cages. Uh, I've even got those plastic perches in that water in them wire cages from, uh, from Jackie at Essex. Bird, that's Essex uh, birds, is it? Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, the all them plastic perches, well, they're hollow. And when that's later on, uh, when I looked, inside were full of might. So what I've done now, I've packed cotton wool inside them at each end. And I dip yeah. them every other week. In TCP. <laughs> I don't think they like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that that's great. Um it, it soaks. You know, it'll soak into the, 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 yeah, the yeah. cotton wool, you see, and it'll yeah. It'll hold there for a week or two. Yeah. Excellent. Um so just in general when you're breeding your birds, uh you use close uh, inbreeding to a really good effect. Uh, can you talk us through your thoughts on it uh, and what factors you take into account when selecting uh, those pairs to inbreed? Well, obviously, you pick your best birds. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, and it's just uh, it's just your own fancy of what uh, what you think will throw. Uh, something good or else if you're a showman uh, uh, it's not much use just breeding anything you may as well try and purr something what you think will throw good it's just your uh, what can I say uh, instinct you've had them all, that, all them years and yeah. you know what my brother always says if you get a monkey when you show it something for long enough, <laughs> it'll start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll learn off. You see, so when you've had birds all them years, it just comes naturally, really, what you think. Yeah. What you think will, uh, will throw good. So, yeah. so is the appearance uh, the, the main factor which you take into account and not how closely related they are? I don't think it matters for a year or two yeah. uh, in breeding. How do you think? How do you think all these things of uh, animals have come as they are, without inbreeding? Yeah, you know. Okay. I mean, what can we say? Well, everything, every animal. Yeah. You see. I imagine. I, uh... I had. Uh, I had uh, a letter. Well. Uh, all printed out for me with race horses and I've just forgot how many times they, they interbreed with them yeah you know so got you I mean I... probably I'll just give you on the instance uh, I didn't pluck my red poles to find out whether the cops were ends and I'm two what was exactly the same and I thought them were two ends well, I put them with a second year cock in a big flight there was uh, a red breasted one a second year bird cola fed and uh, 
one of the hens went down and she reared two chicks. But while this was going on, you see, I noticed that the others, what I thought was its sister, wouldn't let the red-breasted cock go near that hen. So they'd purred up brother to sister. Ah. So, as I reared them, the best um, of that year, I took the red cock away. Uh, I took the sister, other sister away and let the red cock with it. But of all the other red poles, what I bred that year, the sister to brother, purring, I won the all British with it. And, okay. uh, and, but the other one in the nest were the worst one, what I bred. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. know, but that's, that's yeah. well, there you go. Mm. Wow. But so, I, yeah, it was luck. I'm not well. saying, I, I, I wouldn't think twice uh, uh, not doing it for, for, for a year. Oh, yeah. no. Not to get that what you're looking for, especially okay. to get that colour. You yeah. Know, and then work from there. Yeah. Got you. Excellent. The colour's um, very hard. The colour's very hard to get. Yeah. You know. Wow. And uh, so, uh, but to me, the main point is style. You can't be style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I told you about Dolly? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, there's not only Dolly, though, you know. <laughs> oh. uh, so, a few years ago, uh, I was told that you actually bred uh, a corn bunting cross yellow hammer hybrid. Uh, how did you breed it, and uh, what was the father, uh, and what you know, what was the hen? Which way did you do the pairing? Well, in, in then at that time. Uh, I had a, a fellow rang me up and uh, did I want this corn bunting cock, you see. So knowing me, I said, oh, yeah, I'll have it, you see. Uh, and I put it in a flight, but I had a bunting, put the buntings in the other flight. And uh, it was always flying on, I've had this now on, few, on a few occasions. Uh, with other birds, yeah, I've had it with a, I've had it with a twite, uh, with twite and a siskin. The twites wouldn't pair up, and the 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 the, uh, the twite cock mated the siskin through the wire. You see? Wow! And and uh, that's what I think happened with that yellow bunting, corn bunting. Yeah, and I put I put them. And I put the buntings and eggs under a green finch. And I re only only I only got that one with a couple of uh, uh, buntings and, and I read them under the green finch, you see. Wow. And uh, and I didn't realise as uh, as what it was. <laughs> I knew it was different. Like a dinosaur. But it had a lot of work <laughs> on it. And with it being with it being a, it was a hen bird, uh, you see, so it looked more so like a, a yellow bunting. Yeah. Until I, mul until I molted it out, you see, and that's how it become. But I've heard all, I've heard people say all sorts of tales about it, but they, they don't, they didn't know because they never told nobody. Because whether I should tell you or not now, but it was at that time when I shouldn't have had that to corn bunting. But I didn't know anything about all this paperwork and all this and that and other. And you weren't allowed to keep, uh, what was it, half inches, uh, you know, corn buntings, and, uh, unless you had paperwork, you see? Yeah. Wow. So, so that's, that's why I never got round to showing it. Yeah. So, so it was just luck that you actually bred that hybrid. Um, you, you'd not, you'd not done the the pairing. Oh no, it's What's just a just a, a, a miss. Uh, what's it? I've bred over the years, uh, uh, like uh, goldfinch. Uh, I've had pairs together, 
except on this occasion, uh, just a goldfinch cock, which had had a very, very bad mould. And right. uh, I always remember its beak never went dark. It was beak was always clear. And Gro Grosvenor said to me, he said, if a goldfinch is if a goldfinch's bill is white at Christmas, it'll die. That was always white, but it didn't die. So I just threw it in this area out of the way kind of thing. Yeah. And I bred uh, golf. I was in hospital at the time. And uh, the lad that were looking after them came to see me. And he said, uh, well, he says, you've got some goldfinch siskins. So, oh. So when I came, oh, I came out for, was it two, two weeks, I think, or a week, and I had to go back. And uh, I said to him, they're not goldfinch siskin them. I said, they're goldfinch red pole. Well, look at it. The cock goldfinch were chasing the hen red pole. You see? Oh, wow. So he says, no, the goldfinch siskin. I've seen the hen siskin feeding them. Anyway, I finished up, had three goldfinch siskin and three goldfinch red balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The same, you know, the same goldfinch and just... <laughs> yeah. So, most of these things are, are bred accidental. Yeah. You see? I mean, wow. there's been numbers of people over the years. Uh, the last one, as I remember, were Tony Penfold from Northampton. He said, well, Jack, he said, uh, I'm going to be the first one to breed. Uh, what was it now? From a go, uh, with a bullfinch cock. No, ah, a bullfinch cock with a green finch hen. So I just smiled to myself, you know, I said, well, you'll, you'll soon see, you'll find out. And what happened, it was all green finches. A, a wild green finch had mated the hen through the wires. Oh, wow. <laughs> you see? And th this, has happened, this has happened quite a number of times. Yeah. yeah. See, they just, uh, they call to one another. That's when they pair up. Yeah. That's one of, one of my problems with having middle the birds on, or when I've had middle the birds on, you get a green finch at one end of your one end of your setup, and it's calling to a green finch hen at the other end. That that green finch hen wants that cock. It doesn't want one what you want. Yeah. <laughs> See, well, I'm selective yeah. breeding. I'm not breed bothered about the amount of breed, as long as I can breed from the birds I want to pair up. Yeah. Okay. And then you can see what they throw, you see? Yeah. So, what's been the most... You're better off, you're better off with half a dozen good ones than 40 bad ones. <laughs> exactly. Definitely. Uh, what's been the most rewarding hybrid you've ever bred? Oh, dear me. <laughs> I've, I've had some of what, what's not been rewarded. Uh, <laughs> I would never, I would never, ever keep... Uh, a goldfinch bullfinch. No. 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 Why, why is that? A goldfinch, and this is my this is my theory. Uh, if if you only keep a golden bull, eh, it wants to be uh, in a place of its own, away from other birds. Right. You can get them ready for show. You go in the you go in, and all the flights have been knocked out. They seem to be very. Uh, what's the word? Sought after. They're very uh, prone to being uh, disturbed. Right. Least little thing seems to disturb them. So when it when they're in in your your hut or your aviary with other birds, any little thing, they'll knock all the flies out. You get them ah. ready for show again. And the same thing, and the same thing happens again. It goes, oh, just yet. So I would never, no, I would never keep one. 
Fair enough. But the best one I ever saw were Walter, were Walter Jones's. I had a good one then, but yeah. uh, Walter's not Pete Caldwell. Oh. So. <laughs> okay. So, but what um I don't know what's been your favourite hybrid that you've actually bred yourself? Uh, maybe the most re- you know the most rewarding, the hardest one, and you achieved it. Well, as I said, the, the uh, that that two uh, that two uh, corn bunting, yellow bunting, uh, but uh, them uh, uh, they they're like they're not something you go for. They were just a miss up. Yeah, but that's how how some of them are bred. You see. Got you. I've tried all sorts in the past, but I mean, one of the best birds I had was just it was a twite mule. I beat, I beat the bird that won the the, the all British. I beat it twice, other shows, and I never ever won a special with it. And Jimmy Rutter come to me at one show. And he was on about me twice, Mule. You should have had a special with that bird today, Jack. He said, I've got five twice, Mules. He said, but he had three in the class. He said, we're well, not as good as that. And uh, I said, you know, Jimmy, uh, I said, told him, I beat the old British winner twice, and I'd never, ever won a special with it. So you just have to, even when you've bred them, You've got to be lucky that the judge sees it to know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot of, lot of. I come to the conclusion, the trouble what you go through. You know what I mean? I'd sooner yeah. breed straight British. Ah, okay. You know. No, fair enough. Uh, so, what's been your most memorable win on the show bench? The most memorable win. Yeah. When at the all British out of about twelve hundred birds, then I had best, second best, third best, and fifth best British bird out of twelve hundred. Wow. <laughs> That's excellent. All different species. Yeah. Wow, you you really smashed that one then. I mean, the ah, oh, uh, yeah. Do Do you remember what birds they were? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Um, so I've won. I've won. I think I've I've won specials. Uh, I think with all British birds, what I have. Yeah. And. Uh, I won a special when they cross bill at the national, at the old national. Uh, and I've had best British. Uh, well, it was second best, uh, but my Greenfinch won the class, so that was best British. Yeah. Uh, I've had uh, third best with a, with a half inch. i best half inch at the old British with a head. That was a call. I've had. Uh, 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 best all finch with me hen at the old 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 British uh, uh, most uh, most British birds I've had specials with Brilliant. I can't think of what I have not yeah you know. got you well so, there you go you've got to be you've got to have good birds and you've got to be lucky and all definitely I've had bad luck I've had bad, bad luck in lots of things. But I'll tell you all, <laughs> through life, I've had more good luck than bad luck. I don't only mean my birds. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, you that... can count my wife as one in first place. Yeah. I'll second that. How will you second I'll that? I'll second that. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so... When you prepare your birds for a show, do you prepare each species differently, or do you prepare them all generally the same? Well, more or less all the same. Plenty bathing water. Yeah. That's the name of the game. Mm. Got you. Excellent. Uh, I never ever... You see all these things, what you can put in the water, going back years, I have never ever 
put anything in only tap water. Yeah. You know. Got and you. Uh, I could I'm not really big headed, but I could go round the show hall and t- going back years, you know, and I could look at the birds and I could pick them all out what was short of water. Not yeah. had any bathing water. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Now fair enough. Yes. Um, yeah. So so when you judge uh, your birds, when you you know when you're judging at a show, what do you prefer, a smaller typey yellow bird or a huge typey buff bird? What what's your preference? Well, it's same as I've said early on. The main factor to me is a bird with style. You know what I mean? Yellow birds tend to be a little bit more flighty than a buff bird. Right. But uh, buff birds are more inclined to be shorter and stockier. Yeah. Which is, a, which is a, a, well, it seems to be something that a judge likes. Short, cobby birds. But uh, obviously, you've just got to weigh it up, which it's only your opinion when all said and done, you know. Yeah. And if he thinks, the, if he thinks uh, uh, the colour uh, of the bird, I mean, I, I judged at a show, uh, Eastern Federation, uh, one year, and uh, it was the colour outweighed another man's bird uh, for uh, for best and it belonged to big stan edwards from uh, from essex and what yeah. a fantastic what a although it's only small bird but what a fantastic feather and and yellow bird and he got the i think he got best british with it yeah. you see so yeah the other judges agreed as it was the you know it had that X factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got you. So it's ju- it all depends on what the judge. Uh, if he can turn round and and uh, and, and uh, point out the points of it, you know. Yeah. Got you. Uh, what it what it's very good. Yeah. At. So uh, or would you stay outweigh the other side? Yeah, fair enough. So when you've been travelling uh, and judging birds uh, in the UK and Ireland, has there been uh, a p- particular bird that stands out that you wanted to take home? Oh, well, you can always probably see that at any any show. You know what I mean? There's yeah. always something what takes your fancy. Uh, not always... Uh, probably not always what's been picked as best. But that's the difference of the. I've seen many good birds, as. Uh, but, even even sometimes they've won. Uh, yeah. But they've not been they've not been performers, and in right. my eyes they shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Uh, because I always say, <clears throat> the name of the game is a show bird. So yeah. if it doesn't perform, how can it be a show bird? And how oh, can yeah. you put a bird up winning when it's off the perch, under the perch, facing the back of the cage? And you know what I mean? It could yeah. be a big bird, it could be this bird, it could be that, but it's not a show bird. Has any bird ever stood out to you that you wanted to take home that you remember? Oh, that, no? oh, the, oh, oh, as I could remember. Ah, that's a good one. Yeah, that cock what Bill Harris showed at the national. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that brilliant. would be the top of the top of the shop. That would be. Yeah. Fair enough. Excellent. Um, so since you began uh, in the hobby, the development of British birds has been huge, uh, from breeding in large aviaries to uh, breeding in cages, and then obviously the birds massively improving. So. Where do you think the hobby will be and the birds will be in 50 years' time? Well, there's some species, they can't go any better. 
Yeah. Uh, because people will always have... Uh, you can get some people and you'd never satisfy them. It's human nature. Yeah. They'll always find something wrong with it. But they'd probably take it home with them if you give it to them. With, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you. Uh, I think uh, over these last few years, uh, some of the birds are better than what they've ever been. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, more domesticated uh, and perform, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I think on the whole, don't forget, years ago, if there was, we'll just say, for instance, if there were 40 siskins in a class, but there'd probably be 20 what would no good. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away, you see. <laughs> yeah, completely. You know, so just them individuals. But today, uh, you can get, uh, you can get numbers of good birds. Yeah. And they, they, I mean, it has to be something outstanding to win. You know. Definitely. So, mm -hmm. do you think um, maybe in fifty years' time or so? What you're going to see is the standard, like the bar is raised, uh, obviously much more as the birds constantly improve. Um, is there anything else that you think, in the of over the hobby in the next fifty years or so, that will change about the birds? Well, I think they're changing now. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I can remember when you were talking about keeping birds in, 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 in apple boxes and well, with bits of cages with wire netting on the front. Yeah. And all that. Look what look what they've got today. And one of the you see they brainwashed me when I was young. Uh, and I always thought in my mind that all these uh, continental countries uh, as they were we were far superior as far as being uh, wealthy and all this yeah. as we were having a great life. I'm not saying we wasn't in yeah. our standards, but when you see what go over there and you see what they've got, hmm? Yeah. I mean, I used to go to one fellow in Malta. He'd another house what he kept his birds in. Wow. <laughs> he went to he went he went a mile and a half to to this other house where he kept his birds. Hmm. What wow. would they say over <laughs> here to them? You, you, when you see all these cages and every you know what I mean? Yeah. No, they they No. no they way ahead. Yeah. Got you. But so we catch up. Yeah. We catch up. Definitely. And we are doing. Because you only need to look uh, uh, some of the setups now what people have and yeah. uh, there you go I can see it to I can see it to what can I say Blinking out like an international hobby <laughs> yeah definitely well, <laughs> if, if you'll leave us alone <laughs> yeah so Jack we've we've actually got through all of the questions so that's brilliant um is there anything else you'd like to mention before we before we end the recording? Is there anything particularly you'd like to put forward uh, to many of the, the the viewers? Oh, she said, "Oh, she said, oh, it's baby. What's just coming? She's coming at me. Oh, she <laughs> she sets me she set me alarm up once. Ah." Oh. <laughs> uh, Said that again. So, is uh, we've ended the question. So, is there anything else you'd like to talk about or mention um, for to, to, for a lot of people to see uh, with the hobby tips? Anything else that you'd like to talk about? Well, I think there's only things like uh, the the younger fellas, what we have today coming into the hobby, as a going at it to. How can I put it? As I say, better setups, yeah, better feeding methods, 
Uh, keeping them a lot cleaner than what people had used to do, which you have to do to, yeah. to, to get or keep them might at bay. You know what I mean? But yeah. I don't know. We didn't seem to have all this trouble with might. But what can I say? Is that because uh, people, the more birds you have, the more might you can have? You know? Yeah. That and, would be uh, understood. People couldn't afford to keep uh, uh, years ago. They couldn't afford to keep the birds what they keep in today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember when I used to go to the, the local ironmongers at the bottom of the street for a little packet of, is it, were it capons, the cape, mm -hmm. name of the firm. Eh? Right. Yeah. Capons, canary mixture. <laughs> wow. eh, no, they're all buying it in, in underway sites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> oh. Wow. Well, Jack, thank you very much for uh, coming on and sharing some of, well, some of your extent of knowledge. Uh, it's very much appreciated and I'm sure a lot of people will absolutely love to uh, to see all the answers you've got. So thank you very much uh, for coming on and taking time out of your day to, uh, to, to, to do this. So thank you very much. Well, uh, there's nothing I love more than chatting with birdmen. Yeah. And going, going and meeting people, fantastic. Definitely. Well, once the shows are back on, hopefully I'll get to see you again, um, as I'm sure I will, and, and a lot of others. So hopefully, once everything's uh, cleared up, I'll see you at the shows, Jack, and we can have a, a good long talk about everything. I can tell you one thing. Get some good birds ready for next year. You'll need them. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you very much, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Bye-bye. So that does bring us to the end of this special episode of part two with Jack Lloyd. So I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful and picked up some important tips on the way. Um, obviously this is just like a small drop in the ocean for the knowledge that Jack has got. So hopefully we'll manage to get some more in uh, over the next few weeks and so, or so. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I'll find out from Jack and hopefully I might even be able to do one with him in person once his restrictions are allowed, but we'll work something out. So thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, please hit the subscribe button, leave us a like, get your notification bell on and share the video with someone else who you think will find it useful and enjoy it. And you'll get to follow along with all other episodes of the Natives in Norwich Zoom Room. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.